Well, it's here, whether we like it or not. Windows 11 is here. Well, it's not on this USB stick yet, but it will be after my first step of this video. I'm going to go through the full installation process. Every step you need to do to load a brand new computer, because this is meant to be loading up Windows and Windows 11 in particular in this case, onto a computer, let's say that you just built or you purchased without an operating system in it. But I'll go through it step by step, and in each step, I'll show you some of the things that I ran into. And at the very end of the video, so hang on for that, I'm going to talk about some of the big picture items related to Windows 10 itself. So let's get started. Let's go ahead and actually get the distribution of Windows 11 onto this USB stick. Now to completely wipe a USB stick clean, more than formatting it, wiping all the partitions out and being absolutely sure that it works, I'm going to run a program through the command prompt. So down here I type in command prompt to start. I right click on that and I say I want to run as administrator. I then have to enter the administrative password and now I type in the program name disk part D-I-S-K-P-A-R-T. It goes into the program and gives us a prompt that's the same name as the program. Now the first thing you do before putting the USB stick in is to find out which one it is. So the safest thing to do is to say list disk. As you can see, it shows a total of six disks that are out there. I've got uh, a two terabyte, a one terabyte, and then I have some blank spots. Now I will install the USB stick. I hear it make its little click, click, click. I now retype this in. I could just arrow up to the last command and try it again. So now, there's a disk six, 14 gigabytes. That is my USB stick. So the first thing I have to do is say, select disk six. It says disk six is now selected. Now I do a clean. And I now have to create at least one primary partition. And I do that by saying create, only the first three letters are significant, partition primary. It has now created a primary partition. Now I could go ahead and use this particular tool to format it, but I'm gonna show you a safer way to do it. Let's exit this. I'm going to remove the USB stick. Okay. Now I'm going to reinsert it and see what happens here. The first thing it comes up and says is, it sees that it's not formatted. Do I wanna format it? So I will say, yes, I'll just click on the format disk. It's waiting for me to hit start. I say okay, it's giving me a warning, but that's okay. This is the, uh, the USB stick, 14 gigabytes in size. Format complete. Now we have a USB stick that we can now put Windows 11 on safely. Now we need to go to the website where Windows 11 can be downloaded from. I find it easier to just go to Google and type in Windows 11, download, and it shows right here, download Windows 11. Make sure it's a Microsoft site as you see here. And then here's the site that you can download. And there's three different things you can do. You can actually install it directly on your PC now. It'll download and install. Or you can create Windows 11 installation media. Or you could create the third one here, a disk image ISO. I'm going to be picking the middle one. Now you do need to be administrator before you can do this or else it will not let you run this tool. It has downloaded the media creation tool. So what I'll do here is I will run that program. I like to open up the folder and come into the folder and double clicking on that. It does tell me I have to be administrator. And here we go. It is now getting a few things ready. It's checking this PC to make sure it is capable of running Windows 11. So unfortunately you will have to use a PC to create this that already is capable already running Windows 11. I have to accept their terms. I hit next and now I see the USB flash drive choice. I could also switch it to ISO or I could have picked that earlier if that's what I really wanted. And that would be the case if I was using a virtualization program to run Windows 11 in, which is not going to be the case here. Click next. Now it already sees that I have an, a drive F for removable media. Remember that USB flash drive we reinitialized? Well, I left it in so that it's here to be used. This may take a few minutes to do this because it's downloading you know, quite a large image right now onto a USB sticks. And both of those operations, the downloading and the writing to a USB are not the fastest functions you can do on a PC. Okay, that completes it. That took almost 20 minutes to do, so now we'll move on to the next step. 
After I ejected the USB stick from this computer, of course. Well, that took a while. Uh, I sped through it in certain parts so you didn't have to wait through the long download process and the writing of this USB stick. It actually went through multiple phases, if you may have noticed. But it took uh, the better part of a half an hour to create this stick with Windows 11. Hopefully it works. In the next step, I will try to load it on one of my test PCs and see how it comes out. Now, I've loaded Windows 11 once before. However, I never really loaded it to any degree where I planned on using it. This is going to be an exception in this case. So I'll show you some of the stuff that occurred with it. And at the very end, as I said earlier, I'm going to go into some of the overall things to consider. Okay, so I've installed the USB stick and powered on the PC. And now it's going into booting the Windows from the USB stick. And here we are in the installer. The Windows 11 installer looks very similar to the Windows 10 installer. Let me just click Next here. I'll say Install Now. I like to install initially without having a product key, and then I add it in later. It's very easy to do. I like to install Windows 11 Pro. It has more advanced features. It'll work with my security server, which is my um, Windows server equivalent, the Samba. And if I put well, Windows 11 Home, I would also need to have a Windows account in order for it to proceed. It costs a little bit more, but that's worth it. Now here's an error that's not totally unexpected. This means that after I upgraded my BIOS uh, recently, it ran Windows 10 okay, but obviously it didn't run, it's not going to run Windows 11 until I re-enable TPM, the trusted module that uh, is embedded within the firmware, if you have an 8th gen or above CPU like I do here. So let me get out of this and go into the BIOS and fix that. Uh, well, that was an interesting problem, wasn't it? But it wasn't totally unexpected, like I said, as I did. Uh, there's a lot of testing that Windows 11 does when it's trying to install it. Now, there are ways of getting around some of this stuff, but the point of this video is not to come up with some kludgy way of modifying files and transferring files from Windows 10 distribution. I mean, we could get into that maybe in a future video, but the point of this video was to just get it installed. Now, it didn't install, so let me go ahead now and see if we can resolve that problem. Okay, I pulled the USB stick out and I rebooted and now I'm in the BIOS because the hard drive that I have in there, actually the solid state drive, doesn't have anything on it. It's completely new, wiped clean. So I'm going to have to make a couple of changes here. First I will go into the BIOS function. I will go down to this thing called Windows 8.10 Features. It defaults to this other OS. I have to change it to Windows 8.10, 8 slash 10. Then I have to go into Peripherals, that's over one. Then I have to come down to Trusted Computing Module. And it says that the security device is disabled. I need to enable it. So I'll click down, hit enter. Now I'm going to have to reboot the power in order for it to take effect. So what I'll do next is I will save and exit. Okay, I've come back into the BIOS again. Let's make sure everything is still set the way I wanted it. BIOS first. It's set for the Windows 8 slash 10, the peripherals. It now says the trusted computing. Let me click on that. It is now enabled, and notice it has all of the security features for that device turned on. It also shows it as TPM 2.0. I think we're good at this point. Well, you just saw the most common problem that you run into, and that is that your BIOS is just not configured. You could have a very modern PC like the one I was installing this on. It wasn't a super fast one, only an i3, but still good enough to support Windows 11. I had a decent amount of memory, a decent amount of disk space, but all because of this test for the TPM and the fact that you would actually have to reconfigure your BIOS in most cases, that's what led to that issue. So let's go ahead now and make sure that we're past that problem. Okay, this is where I left off before. Let's see if I have any better luck after updating the BIOS as needed to enable a TPM. And that's great. It now sees what it needs to see. I will accept this license agreement and I'll move on. I always like to go to Custom Install. Now, this drive was used before, so what I'm going to do is completely wipe it out. And there's two partitions there, which happens quite often. That has an earlier version of Windows on it, probably. So I will delete. You always start from the highest partition and work backwards. So I'll delete this partition. It now became unallocated space, and now I'll delete this partition. Now we got one contiguous unallocated space here. And all I have to do now is say Next and Windows 11 is installing. This is going to take a while, so I'll wind up jumping ahead here. Okay, now it's doing its first reboot. So I'll go ahead and pull the USB stick out while it's doing this.
Well, that was a totally different splash screen. Uh, this is definitely a new version of Windows. Same kind of questions looks like it starts off with after the initial couple of boots, but they're formatted with better looking screens. So let me answer them and move on. Taking the defaults here. I don't have a second keyboard, so skip that. Now it's doing a check for some updates. Those must be like the super critical updates because uh, you'll see what I do in the next phase to show that we'll still be doing more updates. Okay, now it's asking me further questions. So I'm gonna say I want it for personal use. I don't have a Microsoft account that I wanna use with this. So I'm gonna pick this thing that says sign in options. And one of the options there is an offline account. They give me all the advantages of why I need a Microsoft account. I'll skip this for now. And now I'll set up my first account, which will default to an admin account. So I gotta be careful with that. Give it my password for that. If you want security questions? I'll use a bogus for all of these. Now it's asking me all of these uh, questions about options. Just like I do in Windows 10, I am not going to accept any of these. I'm going to say no across the board. And I'll do an accept of the no's. A little bit prettier background to it, but it's the same story, it's the same information. And then here we are, into the desktop. Now what I'm going to do is a couple of things I always do after I do a Windows install. I'm not going to do a tutorial on Windows 11. I may do that in the future, but there are a lot of them out there right now if somebody wants to catch up on some of the usability things in Windows 11 and the differences between 10 and 11. But there's a couple of things I always do. Let me go into... I see settings here, but I don't see my control panel. So let me go ahead and add the control panel to this start menu. This is a new start menu, by the way. So if I go into the question thing and I do control panel, there it is. I am going to right click it and say pin it to the start. So now if I go into this again, all the way down at the bottom is control panel. I'm gonna move it to the top, right click on it and pick move to top since I use it so often. I'll probably wind up as I use it deleting some of these stuffs if this system survives beyond just a test for this video. The next thing you do is you wanna go into the settings here and this is very important. We wanna do a full Windows update. It's gonna to check to see and sure enough, there are things that it found that need to be updated. These are what we refer to as the critical patches that have to be installed. And then this one down here that says the 2021-10 cumulative update for Windows 11. Those are the non-critical ones, but important. That takes a long time to install those, so I'm not going to do it in this first round. I'm just going to get all the criticals installed. But keep in mind, when you install criticals, sometimes they feed in and bring in new criticals that are needed. It's sort of a dependency. This goes back to Windows XP, actually. So let's go ahead and say download these and install them. Okay, those are installed. That last one is a long one and it requires a restart. So let me go ahead and do that and then I'll do the final couple of things. I do have to check the Windows update one more time. And then there we are. It has uh, rebooted and now we can go ahead and do the last step here. Let me log in. Just click on the background. Let's go back into settings and make sure that there are no more security patches that are critical. Sometimes they feed off of each other. Notice how it's expecting us, it's gonna prompt us for reactivating it a lot. It says I'm up to date, but I'm gonna tell it to check one more time. And it found a couple of more. Looks like three more it found, as I suspected. And we need to check it yet again. And now it finally says we're up to date. And like I said before, we'll save this cumulative one. Before you actually start using it heavily for production purposes, I would go ahead and install that. But it's going to take a while. Okay, and now for the final thing I always do. If you watched any of my videos on security, you'll understand why. Let me go into Control Panel. I don't like this view, so I always change it to Large Icons. And then I go down to the User Accounts. And we have one user account here, as you've seen earlier. My David under admin account. I'm going to create another one. I first click on manage another account. Then I say add a new account. And then I'm going to hit add account here yet again. 
I want to pick this option. I do not have the person's sign-in information. It's again looking for a Microsoft account. I'm going to say add user without Microsoft account yet again. And this will be my David account. And I'll pick the password I use for that. And I get these same questions again. They're going to be all the same. Fido, Fido, Fido. Okay, now it says David, a local account now exists. Close this. If I come back over here and I back up and then I do it again, manage another account, it refreshes it and I have two accounts, David under admin and administrator and the David account, a local account, which is a normal account I will use when I'm doing normal production work on this system. So that's it. Got all of the things done for now. Future videos, I may talk about other critical things I will do with a Windows 11. Now, one last thing is how do you shut this down? And unfortunately, you have to go into here and click on this. And then there's an option here called shutdown. Well, there we go. Windows 11 is now installed on that test PC of mine. Now, as I said in that particular segment, as I was doing it, I wasn't attending to teach Windows 11 to anybody with this video, but just to show you how to get it installed successfully. And I intentionally did not double check the BIOS ahead of time because I expected that problem to come up and I wanted to show everybody how to resolve it. So hopefully you got something out of that. But just keep in mind, this is gonna be a long process. Just like it was when I first started rolling Windows 10 out onto my PCs and my home network. That did not occur in any short period of time. I think I didn't try the first PC for well over a year and a half before I loaded on Windows 10 from Windows 7. And then it took another two to three years before I rolled it out to every PC that I have. And I think I even have one PC that's still downstairs that I never did load Windows 10 on. It still has Windows 7 on it. I don't use it for anything, but it is still running on there. And since I don't need that PC, I'll leave it just in case I ever want to go back and take a look at something. Now, there are considerations like that to keep in mind. Uh, there have been problems with Windows 11 you may have heard about, in particular with AMD processors, with them not performing well. I understand there's now a fix for that. It hasn't been rolled out universally yet, but eventually it will be. Hopefully they'll create a new distribution, a new full build that you can put on a USB stick. But the whole idea of this video was not to solve those types of problems. In future videos, I may be addressing those. I mean, the PC right behind me is an AMD that I'd like to be running at peak performance when I go ahead and upgrade it to Windows 11. So that'll be a perfect example of that transition that I'll be doing for my streaming PC. Windows 11 is more likely to be the most secure, which is what's important to me. So I will make the transition. It just, for me, it takes a while. I don't leap out in front to do those types of things because I follow the general philosophy of if it works, don't break it.